Girls, in this week's parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people, "Hanistaros la Hashem alokenu, v'haniglos lanu ulevaninu la ad olam la sos is called divrei Torah zos." Translated in English, the hidden things belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things apply to us and to our children forever. That we must fulfill all the words of this Torah. So I'd like to discuss today how to understand the opening phrase of this pasuk. Hanistaros la Hashem alokenu, that which is, what's nistar? What does the word nistar mean? Hidden. Amuna? Hidden, excellent. That which is hidden is for Hashem. Vehaniglos, what's nigla? Galoi? Reveal. reveal. That which is revealed, lanu ulevanenu ad olam la sos, is called divrei atarazos, for us and our children we have to do forever. So what, what exactly is Moshe referring to when he speaks about nistaros, that which is hidden, and niglos, that which is revealed. Now I know in an earlier class we discussed in the Tziv, I want to focus on three or four other interpretations. I'll share with you first the interpretations of Rashi, the Sforno, and even Ezra, who essentially take the same approach. You can find echoes of each other's commentary really woven throughout these three. So what does Rashi say, for example? Anyone know offhand what's Rashi's interpretation here? So Rashi tells us as follows, that Moshe is warning the Jewish people that there will be a time in Jewish history when there are individuals or even a community that worship Avodah Zarah. And when an individual or a community worships Avodah Zarah, Hashem is going to punish harshly that person or the community. And Rashi says as follows, that the Jewish people, as it were, went up to Moshe and they said, Moshe, it's not fair. I understand as you're going to punish communities, but an individual? How can we be responsible for what an individual does in the privacy of his own home or her own home. Moshe gave the impression to the Jews that they're going to be responsible even for the avodah zarah of one person. So the Jews say to God, how is that fair? That's not my problem. So you know what Moshe's response is? This pasuk. Hanistaros l'Hashem elokeinu. What do you think that means in light of the, the uh, idea that I just shared? What does it mean? Hanistaros, what does it mean, girls? That, in other words, exactly, Miriam, excellent. Those who worship Avodah Zarah in privacy, la Hashem elokeinu. Moshe says, don't worry about that. What someone does behind a closed door is their own responsibility with Hashem. Vehaniglos, what do you think that means? Things, exactly, averos that happen publicly, Lanu ulevanenu adolam. That's our responsibility. So Moshe is sort of calming down the Jews and he's saying, don't worry about what happens in private. You're not responsible for that. I was uh, giving uh, this idea over to another group and I mentioned that there's no kiosk for reading someone's mind, right? We walk into Brewery these days, we take our temperature and it tells you good or not good. But there's no such thing for Avodah Zarah, Avodah Zarah brain, not Avodah Zarah brain. It doesn't work that way. So Moshe says, don't worry, anistaros l'Hashem elokeinu. That's for Hashem. Vehaniglos, that which is revealed, lanu ulevaninu. That's all of our collective responsibility. So that's the interpretation of Rashi, and you find very similar elements of that in the Sforno and in the Ibn Ezra. Any questions on approach number one? So far so good? Excellent, ladies. Let's keep on going. So the second interpretation is found in Rabbeinu Bachya, and he's quoting from the Rambam. He says, Shamati Bishim HaRambam. I heard in the name of the Rambam that the following is the way to understand this Pasuk. Moshe Rabbeinu is talking about studying Torah. And Moshe Rabbeinu is saying that when you study Torah, you have to understand that you are not necessarily going to appreciate the meaning behind every mitzvah. But when you do, you still must make sure to remain committed to that mitzvah, whether or not you agree with the understanding. As we discussed in our Kashas class last year, for those of you that were with me in 11th grade last year. And that's the way to understand the Pasuk. Now let me read it to you. It reads beautifully. Hanistaros. There are many layers of the Torah that we do not understand. La Hashem elokeinu. Vehaniglos. And if you think you understand something, if you think you have finally uncovered the core of a mitzvah, does that mean you can choose not to do it? Does that mean that you can say, oh, I know what Hashem is getting at when it comes to the mitzvah of Shabbos, and my version of relaxing will be to take out a boat and go fishing. Can you rise above the reason? 
if you think you understand the reason? The answer is no. Vehaniglos, even when it's revealed to you, even if you think you understand, lanu ulevaninu laasos is called divrei Torah zos. You have to remain committed to the Torah and the mitzvos, even if you think you understand the deeper rationale behind the mitzvah. That's the way the Rambam would explain this pasuk. Does everyone understand that? Again, hanistaros, much of Torah is hidden. Vehaniglos, and even when it's revealed to you, don't think you are you can rise above it. Lanu ulavaninu lasos. It's called divrei Torah zos. You got to do the Torah no matter what. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar himself rejects this reason. Can anyone suggest to me a reason why Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar might say that this interpretation doesn't really work with the text? Any suggestions? So Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says this. He says the interpretation is beautiful, but it doesn't fit in the context of Moshe's speech. Moshe is talking about avodah zarah. Moshe is talking about galus. He's not talking about understanding a reason for a mitzvah or not. So Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar has an inter- alternative approach, and with this I'll conclude. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says that Moshe is talking about two different times in Jewish history. There is time of concealment, when we don't see Hashem's hand. We feel distant, we're in exile. And we have to, of course, remain committed to the Torah. Hanistaros, a time of concealment, a time of hester panim, well, Hashem el of course, we have to remain committed to Hashem. Vehaniglos, and even after Mashiach comes and Hashem reveals Himself, are we still going to keep the Torah? Absolutely. Vehaniglos, lanu ulavanenu ad olam lasos, it's called the Torah Zos. We have to continue doing the mitzvos. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says we see from here the eternality of the Torah. Doesn't make a difference if it's in a time of concealment, nistaros, or in a time of revelation of Mashiach. We always will have the beauty of Torah Sashem.